What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be going over how I painted, we, my dad and I painted my 2023 Lunar Rock Toyota 4Runner and how to properly prep and prime and paint your rims, your valances. That's what we're going over in this video. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how we did that and what things I ran into that were really difficult. And yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna get into it. All right guys, if you are not familiar with my brand, I own yodarunner.com where I sell a bunch of different merch with all the color of different kinds of forerunners, fifth gen only on it. All right, let's hop into this video. First step number one, you need to wash your vehicle, okay? If you have dusty, crusty shenanigans on there or even uh, maybe you washed it a couple days ago, you need to wash it that day to prep it properly for painting, okay? Because you wanna get all that dusty, crusty off of there. You don't want any dusty, crusties underneath your paint. It's gonna show up, it's gonna look like she snap. All right. Also, I just want to mention it is really flipping hard to film with one hand and wash your car, especially when the hose gets right in the way, like right here. Horrible. Horrible footage. But I decided to keep it because it was horrible. <laughs> here is our before. She's looking real silver. It's not what we want. We want blackout. That is what we desire. Here are the wheels, the rims before as well. All right, you guys are gonna wanna scuff these bad boys up, all right? Now, uh, something I learned a little bit later from my dad uh, is that you should go with the grain of things when you scuff them up. So really with these, you should be scuffing them in a circular all the way around motion, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Anyway, and then you take your acetone as I showed you there before, get it on the rag. You are trying to get all of the dirt and extra crusty dusties off of these surfaces. Again, because we're not trying to paint crusty dusties into our paint job. It's gonna look like poop, all right? We don't want poop paint. So clean all those off. And briefly, I wanna mention how you get those caps off is you just pop them off with a screwdriver. Um, and you just pop them all off and that's how you get them. All right, now what we're looking at here in this video, these are little clips on the valances. They are a nightmare, okay? Let me just be honest with you guys. So I originally intended to take off my valances and to remove them from the vehicle and then to paint them because, you know, your likelihood of overspray is a lot lower. But these little clips are located in some of the hardest places to get to them. So there are other videos on YouTube that'll show you how to remove your valances. Um, I will not be able to show that to you guys. There were a couple of them that I could not locate and then I did not have the hand strength to push in that um, little part of the clip and then pull it out. Um, so anyway, we gave up and I decided to prep the valances on the vehicle. Luckily, I had removed enough of the clips that I was able to shove this paper in underneath there. However, if you're really careful about how you tape something off, you can always get some paper kind of like this and then tape really close into the valances, ideally layering the tape slightly underneath the valance. Here we're going with the grain. So that's what I was trying to explain earlier is that you wanna go back and forth like this for the most part, um, because if you scuff too deeply, you could create a little bit of a grain that you can see through the paint. Um, so you just wanna use something that can just scratch the surface just well enough. Again, we have acetone and we are wiping it down. Now, if your rag is dirty, you wanna grab another rag after this one and wipe it down again. Um, there's no perfect method to this. You just want to make sure you get it and then you clean it, you know, that's really it because all those scuffies are going to leave little plastic guys all over it that then could be painted on and you would see that your paint would have this kind of weird crusty dusty look again. So that's the rear valance. Now we are priming. Now how my dad specifically talks about spray painting is you want to ever so slightly allow things to overlap. He did say that he hated this primer though, to be honest, but here you can watch him really do his magic. So back, forth, 
And then he'll kind of come back up into that one. Yeah. He's a genius. He's really quite good at what he does. So then he'll just kind of boop. Yeah. So basically, you don't want to layer spray paint too much in one area. That's how it runs. And then you'll notice that he stops spraying at the end of his stroke. Let's up on the trigger and then brings it back in. Let's up, brings it back in. And he's just looking for that even coat. Here he has primed these. I didn't really catch him in the act, but we've removed the wheels off of the Forerunner here. And now we're prepping the rims, the wheels, the rimmy wheels. And here I'm showing you the importance of going with the grain this time. He gave me the talking to when we got to the rims and I was like, oh, shenanigans, I never knew that. But the rims especially do have a little bit of corrugation to this specific um, style of rim on the silver portion, which was kind of a little different, I'm not gonna lie, compared to the old Forerunners that I was used to because I had a lot of third gens prior to this. Anyway, I digress. So yeah, scuff it all up and you wanna make sure that you get in those itty bitty corners and things like that too. Um, you know, really get it. Now, my dad's a genius. Just gotta say that. Man has always been a genius. He is taking a deck of cards here. These have obviously already been painted over. As you can see, the other rim is done. And he is bringing it around the edge as a way to mask off the rim from the tire. And he's priming it, as you can see with your eyeballs. This one was earlier. Our footage is all over the place, I'll be honest. This is my fault. <laughs> the person who's currently editing is at fault for that, which is me. Um, so yeah, you can see just his tactics here, you know, observe and learn, basically. Use your eyeballs. So he's going into those inner corners because the top surface is pretty easy for him to just go real quick at the end there, right? And he's making sure that he's got the can at a certain distance too. If you notice that, he's not like way up close getting runners all over the place because he's spraying it wicked close like that. And now they have dried. So you want to give it enough time to fully dry, which can take quite a few hours. And you pop your rims back on and then you have a brand new Forerunner. And this is what that looks like. Feel free to follow me on Instagram, Hunty Runner. Same is on here. Bye!